Desert Radio. The project where those houses are is a project which has not yet reached practical completion. I get the feeling someone somewhere is not patient enough. We are going to occupy those houses. Now the government has two options here. It's either going to be a peaceful occupation or it's going to be forceful. Why should I be concerned then? The police have many cases which they are investigating. We have responded accordingly and I don't know why. The same newspaper in the media called me. Government have availed 142 million for the independent stadium as well as other infrastructures that they want to develop. Desert Radio 95.3 the bold voice. If we become content with our surroundings, we'll do nothing to change it. There won't be an immediate music scene if there's only a bunch of music scene, for instance. We're just pushing shows and pushing music in the capital. Maybe they need to go out there and, and do some research. We really is a small industry, man. Seriously, we cannot be failing like that. Arts can employ and can create employment within the country, and we just need to make sure that we look at those things. And that's the power and the value of art. Desert Radio, the bold voice. You worked hard for your money, and DSTV gives you a whole lot more for a lot less than you think. Mm. Instead of one takeout dinner, how about treating the family to a whole month of the best entertainment with DSTV? From thrilling sports, blockbusters, captivating series, to entertaining kid shows, we have it all. Totally awesome! And with DSTV Stream, you can watch on the go. I'm here! Plus, you can choose a package to suit your pocket. There's a whole lot more to enjoy for a lot less than you think with DSTV. Unfiltered. Our own state has had great growth in policy and legal reform processes that has also brought the sodomy law under review within the LRDC and also that this particular law has reached the parliament. Current. If you don't have competencies, the right competencies, the right ways of appointing all these people, except maybe for the minister who is a political appointee, but even then, the minister is not going to breathe down instructions that go contrary to the purpose of the interpretation. Impactful. That's the whole point of this discussion today, to see if the laws that have been created in this country are actually consistent and compatible with the language of the Constitution itself. And that is the work of the justices. All in one space. The 40-minute run. Exclusive to Desert Radio. This is a Desert Radio, the bold voice. Thank you so much for making some time for us this afternoon. Welcome to the rerun where we bring you stories that we've covered earlier during the day. My name is John Colin Namene. Now, today we'll be giving you a story about how Namibia has been rocked by gender-based violence, motivated murders this week that have seen the death of three women. The murder of a woman in Usakos has been widely condemned by the community via protest action, and this came after a strong-worded statement from the town's mayor, Irene Simeon Kurtz. Another woman was murdered in Marienthal and another got killed here in Vinduk, prompting widespread outrage. Earlier this morning, we spoke to the spokesperson of the Odonga Traditional Authority, Franz Kali, as well as clinical psychologist Sean Whitaker, to unpack this issue and the scourge of gender-based violence. We'll welcome the 40-minute run now. And, uh, well, it's, it's not the best discussions to have, but it's an important one to have. Nonetheless, Namibia has been rocked, really, by gender-based violence, motivated murders this week that has seen the death of three women. The murder of a woman in Usakos has been widely condemned by the community via protest action. This came after a strongly worded statement from the town's mayor, that's Irene Simeon Kurtz. We then saw another woman being murdered in Mariental, while another got killed here in Vintuk, prompting widespread outrage. And in order to discuss this, we are joined by the spokesperson of the Ndonga Traditional Authority, that's France in Kali, as well as clinical psychologist Dr. Sean Whitaker. Uh, Mr. France and Kali. Yeah, no, I'm very well. Thank you. Indeed. And to you, Dr. Sean Whitaker. John Collins. Indeed. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Nkali, you are all, all the way in, in, in Ondonga show, and that's, and that's mainly, you know, the constituents that you serve. Uh, but this still being in, an issue that affects the entire nation, uh, perhaps just your, your reaction, first and foremost, to the news that we have been reading and seeing over the past couple of weeks resulting in these murders of, uh, of these three women. Yeah, that, that, that news, who, whoever has heard it, a, a true Namibian, a real human being, 
will be really disappointed and shocked. And it is a very painful news that we do not want to have our people, women, to be killed in what many people are referring to as a passion killing. I do not know even how passion can it be if one is killing the loved one. Yeah, that, that news is shocking. And uh, uh, from the side of the traditional authority, we don't condone such things. And uh, there is not even way the traditional authority act have permitted any act of violence in that in that way. So we are all concerned, and uh, we we think people who have got psychological education. I think maybe our population now they need civic education to understand what it means to be in a relationship. So really, the Ondonga traditional authority have been shocked by the news. And and maybe that's that's a, a perfect segue to bring you in here, Doctor Whitaker. Uh, there's always been this connection between quote unquote passion killing, gender based violence, and and mental stability, mental health, um, you know, of either victims and or perpetrators. Is that connection true? Um, well, let me first of all say, John Collin, that I think these incidents, you know, are really outrageous and completely unacceptable. And one can only empathize with the families who lose a loved one in, you know, such a terrible way. It is something that we have to continue to address as a country and, and obviously, you know, to try to stop it. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, it, there's a lot of emotions involved in a situation like this. Um, you know, an intimate relationship is different from all the others in the sense that, you know, there's all these intense emotions, there's no boundaries. It's a very unique relationship in so many ways. You know, if you love someone, it's a very intense emotion. It's a wonderful emotion. Uh, you know, we, as human beings, we are, you know, meant... To, to bond with others, to be attached to others. And love, of course, represents that, you know, as that really positive uh, attachment to someone else. But, of course, when that relationship comes to an end, you get a whole range of emotions, a real, you know, sense of outrage, anger. Uh, uh, I think, you know, unfortunately, there's, there's uh, you know, this need to take revenge on this person for how dare she you know want to end the relationship so, so from a psychological point of view yes of course there's a whole range of emotions involved passion uh, is an interesting way to describe it and um, I'm not always convinced you know that it's that it's uh, the, the, the proper description of, of what is going on um, you, you know, because for me, there's a there's a, a huge sociological factor, John Collin, namely patriarchy in the background, and 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 perhaps certainly for me, there's there's not only passion involved. Yeah, I think there's anger. You know, like I said, there's there's re revenge taking, um, and of course, like I said, there's there's patriarchy as well, and perhaps. Certainly, from my point of view, patriarchal killing is perhaps a more appropriate description. I, like I said, I understand the focus on the emotions, but I think we need to be mindful of some of the other factors as well. And, you know, because uh, you know, besides the emotional part, and unfortunately, so many of these men simply cannot handle their emotions very well. You know, anger is a very, very strong emotion. And, of course, you know, we teach men from early on to, you know, be strong, uh, you know, don't show emotions. And it's such an unhealthy thing to say to men, to say to boys, you know, because we are born with these emotions. You know, we are born with certain basic emotions. They are there. They will always be there. Uh, what we need to be saying to boys and to men is, you know, it's okay to have emotions. Let us talk about this. Let us, you know, let us talk about how you have to manage these emotions, you know. When you fall in love, when you feel sad, when you feel anxious, when you feel angry, 
like I said before, because anger is such a powerful emotion, I think that's very often the one people struggle with the most because it's you know it's so intense, it cuts off the thinking brain. Indeed. So, so what we should rather be doing is to say to men, it's okay to have emotions and and, and learn to manage this and. You know, and, and of course, women have the right to stop a toxic relationship. I mean, you, you know, uh, certainly from my experience as a psychologist, women, you know, don't walk away easily or they're not, you know, unlike men, women are not easily unfaithful. Indeed. And, uh, and, 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 and Doc, I, I just want to stop you there because I do want to save that discussion or that, that point from of the discussion uh, for later stage. I just want to bring in uh, Mr. Nkali here quickly. And, and and just look at the the role of traditional authorities, which which is one of the institutions in society that is looked at as as a foundation, you know, for people's behaviors, for their beliefs, their perceptions, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is is there responsibility you, you feel, Mr. Nkali, from the traditional authority to 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 not only speak on these matters but to direct behavior? when it comes to issues of gender-based violence? Yeah, but, you know, I think uh, that that is very much uh, what one might think, and even observing that uh, the, the traditional authority have got a role to play in that. And uh, when we are talking about, or one is talking about traditional authority, we should not look at those that are in position of uh, traditional leadership. Mm. We should talk about traditional authority, including the community themselves, that the upbringing that was based on tradition and culture can be used to change that whole situation. If the community from household level can embark upon that journey to say, this is not acceptable in our community and in our society, so that the education of, of these young ones can start at home. And they say, charity begins at home. And without that customer or traditional education or upbringing, then we will grow up people and they say, you will not be able to change them once they grow up with that misunderstanding. So the role there for is that the traditional authority should enforce those traditional values that are constructed. And that can also contribute to the reduction of, of gender-based violence. Indeed. And, 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 and I want to bring in a word that uh, Dr. Whitaker used, which was the word patriarchy. There's, there's usually this connection between uh, traditional th- the values and traditional authorities and, and, and the word patriarchal, seeing that um, you know, Africa generally is viewed as having a very patriarchal history, um, you know the traditions in African values are very p- patriarchal in nature. Do you think there's a connection between the, the extreme side of of patriarchy and this violence that we've seen not only now but throughout the years as well? Yeah, that, that, that one one cannot say really there is a connection mm. because w- the reason why I'm saying there is might be less connection. One cannot deny the fact absolutely. But the issue is the young generation currently, when it comes even to culture, they, they are not following because they are on their own, and that is where at least the community is messing up. So the culture is no longer that dominant, especially amongst the young generation, because they think always culture is, is, is affiliated to to being, uh, being outdated and being, given, you see, Primitive, and that is not being primitive. Is how a society should be. The culture was supposed just to pave the way as to how people should be. And within the culture, there is no way in one culture that if there it is even a, a broken relationship, people should opt to go to the extreme of even hurting somebody, leave alone killing a person. So that 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 is my position. That. At least, if the young generation can also go back to some of the good traditional or customary practices, then things will just work out better to the benefit of all Namibians. Uh, that can be a contribution. 
and, and doctor, just 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 from your side, how, how important is it for for for, for the mental stability of uh, again, like I said, victims and perpetrators, for institutions like traditional authorities, like churches, like schools, um, that 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 construct behavior from a very, from a foundational age. How important are these institutions in the grander scheme of, 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 of this discussion? No, look, I mean, of course, I mean, you know, you need institutions in any society, um, you know, to shape people's behavior and to, you, you know, and to guide as much as possible. Uh, you know, so, of course, we have to look at, at all levels of society, including the schools, by the way. Um, where we, you know, we, we don't have, uh, you know, proper sex education, which which to me means speaking about gender roles as well. You know, the male gender role, the female gender role, what, what that means and, and so on. C- certainly from my impression, the way in which I, I think, you know, people, people see this, people experience this patriarchy, is this idea that the man is the head of the household. And I think that is that is what I hear very often. And I think it's really that kind of mindset that's a big part of the problem. Because if you think that the man is the head of the household, that means the, you know that the woman, the children must be subordinate. You know, they must be submissive. It's all about the emotional needs of the man. It's it's not an equal situation. It's not gender equality. It's not about you know the, the man and the woman being equal. Uh, and I think that's a big part of it because these men tend to be quite narcissistic. They tend to be very selfish. They really believe that you know that their emotional needs should come first. And, and I think that is the way in which patriarchy is expressed, you know, in these in, in in these families or you know in households. And I think that's an important. A mindset that we should try to counter as much as possible and, and, and speak about, you know, what does that mean? When you say the man is the head of the household, what does it mean? Uh, does it mean, you know, the, the, the men can go out weekends, Friday nights, they go to the nightclubs, they stay out, they, you know, hang out with their buddies, they drink, they, you know, they come back Sunday, Sunday evening. And they just expect everything to be fine, you know. There must be a plate of food and the woman mustn't say anything and, and so forth. You know, what does it mean when we say the man is the head of the household? Uh, you know, or, or should it be a different, you know, should be a different setup? Uh, you, you know, if you are committed in a relationship, surely you should be at home Friday nights. You know, you should be, you know, spending time with loved ones. Uh, there should be equality in the relationship. What does that mean? It also means equality in terms of emotional needs. You, you know, meeting each other halfway. What are the emotional needs of the woman? Because, like I said before, in so many of these situations, you know, the women are extraordinarily patient and, and, and you know they stay but eventually of course I think like any other human being you, you get tired you know if, 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 if there's so much emotional abuse eventually of course the women get tired and they want to stop the relationship and then these men tend to react very violently you know because they can't handle the breakup of the relationship you know because they have this idea that you know the woman belongs to them you know that that's another part of patriarchy this notion that you know she's my property she must do you know what i want um you know so it's 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 those kinds of things that we need to look at that we need to raise because you know woman isn't your property i mean ultimately she's a human being with her own emotional needs her own personality her own life agenda and if you want to keep her, you have to, you know, keep make her happy, treat her with respect, you know, that kind of thing. And she has the right to stop the relationship. If she's no longer happy with you, you know, she has the right to walk away and say, look, I'm sorry, this doesn't work for me. And, and the men should, you know, be mature enough to accept it. And, and you certainly have no right you know, to become aggressive or to become violent or even, you know, to kill someone. I mean, that's that's extreme. That's, you know, the, the other part of this, John Collins, is that we must also say that it's not all the men, of course, who would go so far and to kill someone. You know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, most of the men, of course, accept 
the break up and walk away, but I think there's a small number who become aggressive. And my my impression is that they probably grew up in a very violent household, and that is why they think violence is okay. And that is, you know, that is another issue, you know, in terms of the violence within households, um, which I think is usually about the way in which you know children are raised, the spanking, the corporal punishment, you, you know, really physical abuse in the name of disciplining a child. I think these are probably the the, the main I, the, the issue of you know mental instability. I think it changes the discussion too much for me. I, I think it, 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 it's too easy to say, you know, you have a psychological problem and, they, and that's the reason. And then we don't look at these wider social issues as well, you know, and try to really understand what's going on at a deeper level and try to find answers at a deeper level. It's, for me, it's too easy to say, you know, he's got a, yeah, he's abnormal, he's got a psychological problem. It doesn't really help us to understand and to find solutions. Uh, Mr. Kali, perhaps your, your, your response to Dr. Whitaker, but also just uh, to speak to us on on how traditional authorities, especially the the Ndonga traditional authority, um, goes out into the the, the 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 constituents, into the public or, or into the ground rather, and and speaks on matters like this. Does it happen on on a regular basis? Yeah, th- thank you very much. To, to answer to that question, it is not very much easy for the traditional authority to go on. Those on a regular basis, given their 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 position in terms of uh, either financial or capacity, because tradition is based on the traditional norms and cultures. But that's why now each and every household uh, has got the responsibility based on where they are. Uh, let's say, but the accessibility to the community is that uh, traditional authority have got all uh, are at all level. I've got uh, village headmen, they have got cluster headmen, they have got uh, district uh, senior councillors, and then the traditional authority for that specific uh, community. Yeah, they don't go out on daily basis, but th- those issues, we are also dealing with them because once things of gender-based violence are and they report it, then it is brought before the councillors, the traditional councillors, and normally there are also some remedy that, that is to be taken or sanction to be made. And that, that is the only way that, that they can go. But to, to go all around really like a well-financed institution, it is a bit difficult because the traditional boundary might even go over 200 kilometers. And, and it becomes the spirit and the presence is there given all those level of, of, of leadership from the village to the, the district. So, and I was also thinking that uh, the, the other thing, once you look at it, because we are talking about tradition, we are talking about a specific or a specific community, traditional community. Now, the moment you, 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 you go from one traditional community to the other, that becomes more or less inter, intercultural uh, relations. And now the culture being different also, that may also contribute because in what community might be doing this is not a problem. But to the other community or traditional community, doing that is a, is a taboo or it's a problem. So those are also now in a way that traditional community unknowingly or indirectly contribute to those gender-based problems. See that Just, issue of our community doing it this way, our community is doing it this way. That that diversity is, it might be also lacking and that can also be the cause at traditional authority level. Not as a matter of leadership, but as a matter of cultural issues. Indeed, and, and, and that's an interesting point you bring up uh, and, and Dr. Whitaker, I want you to listen in because I'm going to ask you about that shortly, but just to continue on this point, uh, Mr. Nkali, uh, w- what are you suggesting on, on that point? Are you saying that the leadership of traditional authorities should perhaps teach their constituents how to, um, you know, deal with intercultural relations, intercultural situations. Um, or, 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 or what exactly is it? Are you trying to say? Yeah, 
that definitely, I think that that, that can be also one of the solutions. Mm. Because if people understand that once I move out of this traditional community to the other, the issue that we consider as issues here, there are not issues in that other traditional community. And therefore, I have to adjust myself to the real situation that I will find myself in. And uh, it is also good if, if traditional authority can go on educating communities that as we are living, we are all one. And being one, we differ only in the way we are doing things. So, And therefore, once you find yourself crossing that boundary line or bringing in somebody that has crossed the boundary line or traditional boundary, then you also learn about how things are happening in their community and also give a brief of what how things are happening or being done in your community. I think that that one is very critical. If we want to maintain that environment where everybody can live free, free from uh, gender-based violence. Thank you. Um, Dr. Whitaker, your your thoughts on that? I fully agree with it, Mr. Nkali. I mean, I think, you know, we need to promote a national culture, John, John Colin. I, the, the reality is that, you know, cultures change, cultures evolve, cultures, of course, are not frozen in time. Uh, we live in a very different historical era, you know, in, the, in that we, have, we live in a democratic society. You know, so we should promote a democratic national culture as much as possible. Um, you know, and that definitely should include, you know, uh, gender equality, non-sexism, and, and so on. Um, because look, there's a larger picture, you know, in, in, in if you, if one looks very, I'll, I'll say very briefly, if you look at violence, there's different components. You know, we, we tend to speak about direct violence, these incidents. You know, these incidents keep on occurring, you, you know. Uh, and then we, f- we obviously, you know, focus on it. We have discussions about it. But it's issues of direct violence, you, you know. And, and once again, for me, the, the cycle of direct violence, of course, starts in the households with the spanking of children. But there's two other important components to violence. There's structural violence and cultural violence, you know. Structural violence, of course, poverty, unemployment, which unfortunately, you know, is getting worse in Namibia. And then, of course, there's cultural violence, you know, racism, sexism, patriarchy, and so on. And and these three components of, of, of violence tend to, you, you know, strengthen each other. So so we need to, of course, understand the wider context of our socioeconomic crisis. Uh, and unfortunately, for that reason, the violence will increase. But there's, of course, a lot we can do in terms of, you know, interpersonal violence, you know, one-to-one violence. And, and, and to continue to have this kind of, you know, education, have discussions around it, because people do have control over their behavior, they can manage, they can, you know, decide to walk away in, instead of, you, you know, wanting to stab your girlfriend or hit your girlfriend, you do have the power to decide and to walk away um, and to go and calm down and, you know, talk about it tomorrow and find a different solution. I mean, I think, you know, people do have that, that personal power and, and that's really you know why it's important to have this there's no doubt about the fact that culture is very important and will always be important and and we have to respect our cultures we must develop a progressive multiculturalism you know in Namibia look at what are these positive values that we must promote of course we must do that we must respect languages you know we must of course inculcate positive values of you know respect uh, equality and so on. So, 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 and so, culture is an important role to play in terms of you know promoting our it's a, such an anti-violent, anti-violence mindset. You know, so, so, so for me, definitely. I mean, I, I fully agree that that we need to develop some national culture and, and of course, positive values as a nation. We're winding down our conversation with the spokesperson of the Ndonga Traditional Authority, that's France and Kali, as well as clinical psychologist Dr. Sean Whitaker, and we are speaking about the issue of gender-based violence that uh, has really rocked the country 
with uh, the last couple of weeks or so seeing uh, more murders than we are used to and already one murder is uh, one too many Mr. Nkali and, and, and Dr. Witzkal I want you to listen in as well because I'll pose the same question to you we saw a, a few years back then President Ifike Punya Poamba saying that we have to pray against gender based violence uh, former First Lady Monica Gengos essentially investigated the root cause of gender based violence uh, through her various campaigns and platforms on a national level how do we deal with this issue of gender based violence Mr. Nkali that's for you National level. I think uh, the approach is uh, culinary related to former president uh, stand on gender based violence and then the former first lady stand on gender based violence. I think uh, we need else maybe to put more effort and to put more effort in that civic education when it comes to issues pertaining to gender. That, that education should also not be exclusive. You should not exclude anybody because now, in many cases, I do not know whether I'm wrong or right, but uh, what I have seen, in, in many a time, you might find that there are programs only for, 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 for uh, baby girls or girl child, but, but then it lacks the involvement of boy child as well. And that, in that way, we educate one side, while the other side, we are living it in, in the darkness. So at the... At the top leadership level, I think we need to devise programs that can be geared forward for to address issues of uh, girl-child issues and also those that address issues of boy-child issues. But again, those separately need also to be brought together as Dr. Ritka was referring to a, a national culture. A national culture that we should then go beyond that and say, as Namibian, how do you want to our people to behave in order to maintain peace and stability and love in the country? On your end, Dr. Whitaker? Oh, no, look, I, I fully agree with what Mr. Nkari said. I mean, there's really nothing to add to that, I think. Let me just one final point at a different level, John Colin, if I may. I just want to say to Namibian men, um, there's actually very effective medication for that kind of aggression, pathological jealousy, uh, suspiciousness. There's actually very effective medication. So we would like to encourage them to seek help, you know, do something. If you have anger issues, if you have a short temper, if you become violent, there's actually help available at that level. So please do something about it. We are really tired of all this violence and we really need to respect our women and girls in this country. Gentlemen, we do thank you so much for making some time for us this morning on a discussion that uh, probably needs more in-depth contribution from those at the national level, but also from those on the ground, those in the streets, from the uh, abusers themselves to the victims as, 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 as well, as well as your colleagues and people in your spaces. Uh, for your time, much appreciated. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, Colin. All the best for a day. Indeed. Thanks. Same to you. Francis Nkali, the spokesperson of the Ndonga Traditional Authority, as well as Dr. Sean Witt, a clinical psychologist there, uh, speaking to us on this, this, this scary issue of gender-based violence. Thank you so much for tuning in to the rerun. We'll be back again tomorrow with another discussion that you might have missed that is of importance and of relevance to you. A very good afternoon from The Bold Voice.